I'm a fan of Jim Renorski. Or Wynorski. Or however we pronounce it. Even if I don't know how to properly pronounce his name, I am a fan of the man because he did make Chopping Mall. And Chopping Mall was one of my favorite films growing up as a kid. I watched it a lot. I had it on VHS. I had it pretty well taped off of a rented copy of it, so it was it wasn't all the way on the up and up, but for them time periods it was the standard pretty much. So I had that and I wore it out, I loved it. And I didn't know it because it was under a different alias, but he also directed Busty Cops, which was a film in my teenage years that I that I found quite uh, interesting, to say the least. It introduced me to a young lady by the name of Jessie Jane, who I guess I will forever be in debt to Mr. Wynorski for, for, for leading me into such a wonderful area of adult entertainment. But nonetheless, today is about the recently or soon to be whichever Blu-ray release of Sharkensaw Women's Prison Massacre. When I first seen that title, and when I was seeing the shark for the first time in the movie and, and the CGI that was used to make the shark, I thought to myself, you know, this looks like something we would see on the Sci-Fi Channel. Or maybe Chiller, because Chiller sometimes kind of lowers her standards to, to, to such. Um, and it's kind of like what it is. And, and IMDb says that it was made for TV, so maybe that's exactly what it is. Nonetheless, we've got these really, really good-looking female prisoners, and they're out in like the swampy woods area, you know, doing what they make prisoners do, you know, clean the roads, clean the woods, clean the areas. And um, somehow along the way, uh, this shark swims from the ocean to the woods somehow. Maybe I missed something on exactly how that's possible. But the shark gets there and eats one of the ladies pretty early on. And, uh, you know, it kind of causes a ruckus. And then some other stuff happens because one of the other chicks has a friend who kind of holds up the place and takes them all captive. So that's basically your, your, your main story is, you know, the, the main guard cop guy is held captive with the few prisoner, you know, women that don't want to go along with it. And then other people come into play and then, you know, force all over. You pretty well have them battling sharks, maybe more than one. I ain't going to spoil that for you. I'm going to let you watch that yourself. But, uh, and then there's also, you know, a little side plot. And I want to mention her name because I don't want to get it wrong. But Tracy Lords, you know, Shock em Dead or whatever that was that came out a long time ago. She's here playing like a detective as well. And she's got a guy that's running around with her. And if there really is a point of her character, like I know she's like, you know, on the trail of some suspicious activity that has to do with the sharks and all that stuff. But her character kind of seems a little pointless, although it is nice to see Tracy Lords in something now. You know, even if it's how many years since, you know, stuff like Shock and Dead stuff, still nice to see her get work, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the movie, I mean, you can just look and tell your target audience for this. You know, and I guess you, you really can't be surprised that the man that made Chopping Mall and softcore porn for, like, HBO or Cinemax would be the guy who who made this. He also made 976 Evil 2, which I did like. But, uh, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's a bit corny. There's a lot of CGI in it. There's some funny parts to it. Transfer looks great because it's like a new movie. It basically looks like all your low-budget indie films you see, like, go straight to DVD. But it looks better because it seemed like they had a better camera for it, if that makes sense. So, it's got that really cheap indie film vibe, but it looks like it had a better budget because the camera work was, was really nice and the camera used was really nice. This has audio commentary with director Jim Minorski and actress Cindy Lucas and Amy Holt and a still gallery. So it's kind of light a little bit on the, on the extras. And it's not going to be for, for everybody, obviously. But if you like stuff, and I hate to even say this, but if, if you like stuff like, there's the women there, which is, is a very good part of the movie to see, I guess you could say. Um, if you like stuff like Sharknado, there's no nudity here, by the way, so don't get too excited. Uh, if you like stuff like Sharknado, or the other really strange sci-fi channel stuff that's filled with way too much CGI and logic being completely thrown out the window, uh, this is one to watch, because you get that, but you still get women wearing tank tops and short shorts and, you know, funny stuff that's meant to be probably a lot more funnier than it actually turns out to be, but... Hey, it's whatever. It, it's different strokes for different folks. It wasn't necessarily my cup of tea, but I still, you know, was entertained enough to finish it and not feel the need to cut it off or fast forward it or just put it off till later. So that's the Shark and Saw Women's Prison Massacre. Proceed to watch this one with extreme caution 
and make sure that this is your type of movie before you go and spend your money on.